Hi. We are going to do an autumn equinox ritual today. Very exciting. This is our first time doing this via the platform of doing things live. So uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this. Logistically, uh, with this equinox ceremony, if you can get the things that were requested, such as a white crystal or a white stone or a rock even, it would be work for you. That would be great. And then also a black crystal. That would also be good. So or stone or a rock. So if you don't have white or black, that's okay. Something that's two toned or two different colors. Um, it could even be like a penny and a nickel. Uh, that would work too. Just something that's a contrasting variation would be really good for today. Great. So to begin, my name is Reverend Dr. Natalie Vale, and I am here in San Diego, California. I am a certified psychic medium, a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine, as well as an ordained spiritualist minister, Celtic high priestess, and I practice a lot of the Druid arts. So today marks a really important time on the year wheel, so or the magical wheel, and at every time on the wheel that we come into this magical moment, there's a special portal that gets opened up. And in that portal, we can experience a lot more profound healing, more profound magic. Um, maybe your dreams, if you noticed your dreams, might be were kind of weird last night. I know mine were. Uh, and I've talked to a few other people. They said theirs were too. So it's a way of our unconscious or subconscious communication with us. Also, the portals between the spirit dimensions and realm or the other world are also a little bit more thin at this time. So really good opportunity for us to do a little bit of ritual for honoring this season, honoring this time, which is about balance, harmony, beauty, love, gratitude, and the harvest. So very good. So to begin, let's just go ahead and start off with a little bit of the grounding meditation just to calm things down. It's the end of the day, obviously. And uh, regardless of where you've been or where you're at, it's nice to kind of just wash all of that away and get ourselves ready and prepared to do some deeper work. So to begin, please find yourself in a nice, comfortable, quiet, seated position. And when you're ready, you can close your eyes. We're going to start by taking three cleansing breaths. In through the nose, let your abdomen and chest rise, fill, and expand. Hold and exhale out through your mouth with a big audible ah, releasing and emptying. Good. We'll do that twice more. Big cleansing inhale with a large reach all the way to the sky. Hold, pause, and all the way out through your mouth. Cleansing, releasing, letting go. And one more breath. Really making it count this time. Filling up as much as you possibly can with clean, fresh, new air. Holding and letting go. Releasing. Relaxing. Now falling into your own natural rate and rhythm of breath. That's neither too fast nor too slow. Or too shallow or too deep. And just enjoying your breath. Enjoying this moment to slow down, to be present. Honoring yourself for taking some time away from your busy schedule and life tonight to honor the sacred time and to honor yourself. And just show yourself some gratitude and appreciation for being present, for being here in this moment, no matter what it took for you to get here tonight. And know that this is exactly where you're meant to be. So try to focus on the here and now. Aware of the thoughts in your head. Aware of the sounds around you. By making the choice to no longer be distracted by any outside influences. And just diving deeper within your own inner sanctuary of healing. 
giving yourself permission to fully relax. Envisioning a wave of tranquility and serenity washing over you now. From the top of your head, down your spine, the front and back of your body, the right and left sides, all the way out through your fingers and toes. Your body feeling very heavy, warm and relaxed. All of the tension and stress of the day just melting away from you as if wax was dripping down from a candle. Your body so heavy, it just effortlessly sinks down into the support beneath you as if an anchor was dropping down to the bottom of the ocean. Feeling very, very supported and safe where you are. And then just taking another moment to gently scan through your body, looking for any areas of tension or discomfort. And without judgment or criticism, just sending love to that part of you. Unconditional love, without story, without belief. Loving yourself, loving your body. And then sending gratitude, gratitude to your body for everything that it does for you. And taking one more moment of quiet, of peace, of stillness. And when you're ready, starting to deepen your breath again. Breathing in to the nose, filling, rising, expanding, holding. And again, all the way out through your mouth. Feeling yourself back in the space, grounded, centered, peaceful. When you're ready, open your eyes and maybe do a light stretch just to get yourself more back in the mood. Good. Looking for any areas of time. So at this time, I would love for all of those who are viewing or watching live to just write your name and your one word intention of what you're seeking from tonight's ritual. That could be connection to self, enhanced intuition, maybe a more open heart, perhaps some healing that needs to happen for you, maybe some clarity or insight, whatever that is, please feel free to share it with the group and connect with us here, creating a stronger sense of community. As you know, when one or more are gathered, more magic can happen. So thank you for sharing with us. Good. So let's talk a little bit about the autumn equinox and what that's all about. And then we'll dive into the ritual portion. So the autumn equinox is actually the second harvest festival of the year. It's often called Mabon also, uh, depending on what sort of magical tradition you are practicing. This uh, time of the year really honors the change of seasons, where we shift out of the summertime, which is ruled by the fire element in Chinese medicine. And the fire element is about passion and creativity and connection and community and fun and playfulness and all these really juicy, wonderful, loving things into the fall. Um, and the fall is considered to be the start of the darker side of the year. And the fall is ruled by, in Chinese medicine, we would believe to be the metal element. The metal element represents the respiratory system, so the lungs, and also it also governs the large intestines. So the lungs are the yin, the large intestine is the yang pairing to that. So they're best friends. Now, our lungs provide us with the opportunity to breathe, to take in life, versus the large intestine is about releasing and letting go and taking everything that we have inhaled 
and then integrating that, metabolizing that, and releasing it out from our body. So the time we say that the metal element or the emotions that the metal element is in charge of are considered to be grief, sadness, sorrow, loss. Um, not the most fun emotions uh, to deal with, let's be honest. Nobody ever says, hey, you know what? I'm going to go home Friday night, grab a box of Kleenex, watch a sad movie, and drink a glass of wine by myself. Um, no, that's not what we say. But these emotions need to be felt. They need to be understood. They need to be expressed and worked through and loved. And so that is the time that we're in right now. Additionally, the sun did move into the sign of Libra today on the Western astrological wheel. And Libra um, being around this time is such an amazing thing because this energy is again about balance and equality. So with Libra, you see the scales that go back and forth. And so um, all of our lovely little Libra friends who are just always got the best fashion style that are always um, you know, the most loving and fun, um, they have a hard time with battling these two aspects of self, the light and the dark, just like Gemini's do too. Anything that has a duality aspect to it. And so at this time of the year, we're being asked to really look at what parts of ourself are out of balance. Okay. So this time of the year celebrates duality and trying to find equanimity within duality. So many oxymorons. Don't you love it? So at this time, we're looking at the dark versus the light, the yin versus the yang, any kind of polarity that you're going to see in your life, masculine versus feminine, doing versus being, receiving versus giving. Huh. That's exhausting to try and create balance of all those areas in our life. But isn't that what it's all about, right? Trying, especially in Chinese medicine, we believe that it's really about finding the middle ground, not being excessive or deficient in any one area or another. So let's talk more about what this time of this year honors. So this time of the year is great for taking stock or inventory of our life, being a little bit more reflective. And in this, we move out of the summertime active yang energies, uh, which are very masculine, um, but very fun, into more of this yin time of the year, which is that being. So how can I just allow and receive? I've already done everything, okay? I've planted my, seed, my seeds in the spring. I you know, started you know, watering and tending to my crops in the summer, and now I'm actually in my harvest. I can sit back and see, you know, what have I, I'm gonna go ahead and reap what I've sown, and that can be a really good thing, a very positive, beautiful thing for hopefully all of us, hey, wink, wink, um, or not. <laughs> it could also be a time where we're faced with some of the consequences of the actions and decisions that we might have made that possibly now, um, with a little bit of space, we look at and we're like, oh God, I might have some regret over that. Now, regret is not a bad thing. It's actually a healthy level of regret is a really super good thing because it means that, guess what? You're learning. <laughs> um, and you're a human and you're gonna make mistakes. That's part of life, right? We say to err is human, to forgive is divine. So coming into that place of understanding, okay, I'm here now. And so this isn't a bad thing, you know, this is exactly where I'm meant to be, exactly where I've set myself up to be, but do I like this? And what in my life has brought me here? And do I need to bring anything back into balance in order to get to where I actually want to go versus where I am at? However, if you skip the, I want to just be there and I'm not going to look at where I'm at, um, that also doesn't work. So <laughs> being very, you got to be reflective. You got to gather yourself, gather your resources, pull things together for yourself, you know, and look at the fruition, the completion, the fulfillment that's happening for you right now. Yes. Now, a really good way to get out of that funk, because especially if things are not where you maybe want them to be is to really um, take on an attitude of gratitude. And we see that a lot in Western cultures, especially here in America, we celebrate Thanksgiving, which is kind of our way of, of also celebrating this holiday of the autumn equinox and the harvest and you know what have we created in our life and now it's coming to us. So giving thanks is a super beautiful thing. Um, and also, you know, a, for the abundance of our life, whatever that looks like. So whether that's money or friends or time from other people or appreciation or 
just anything that kind of brings that that love into your heart. Now, uh, at this time, what's really frequently celebrated are some of the Celtic goddesses or gods. Um, and one that I love the most that I want to share with you guys, if you want to work with some of this god slash goddess energy, is um, the god Avalok. And Avalok um, is, oh man, oh, this makes me like, it makes me smile when I think about him, um, because he's a, a really generous, kind um, god um, in the Celtic tradition, and he's in charge of the apple orchards in Avalon. And Avalon happens to be, um, well, what we think, right, modern day Avalon is around Glastonbury, England, which I've been to twice, and I've actually had the pleasure of journeying twice. Um, in the apple orchards of Avalon um, with my very dear mentor teacher friend, um, Dan Forrest. So uh, I can tell you that the energy there is so alive with Avalon energy. And, um, and when you look at the apples, because apples are a very important fruit for this time of the year, um, you'll, there's so much symbology that goes, that goes into apples. But one way of working with that energy is um, to go apple picking or to make apple pie for yourself or your family. Or you can do what I did, which is um, here, in Amer uh, here in San Diego, right outside of town in East County, we have a little town called Julian. And it's an adorable little mountain retreat getaway escape place. And they are famous, world famous for their apples. So I went up last weekend, and uh, I, I cheated, I'm not going to lie, um, and purchased an apple pie <laughs> from, from Julian um, so I could really bring in that energy of, you know, apple medicine and using apple as an herb and to connect to um, the god Avalok with all of his wisdom and love and um, his magic for celebrating this, this harvest time. Another uh, goddess that are, you know, um, on the other side of things, on the yin side of things, uh, we've got the goddess, the Kaliak. Now, the Kaliak happens to be one of my matron deities. Um, she is a serenity goddess, so meaning that she takes on the figure of maiden mother and crone, so she's commonly known as the crone. I like to think of her as what she looks like is like the wiggable witch from Snow White. And um, guess what they used in Snow White? A poisoned apple. So here we go again, <laughs> lots of um, apple energy. So I really highly um, encourage everyone at this time of the year to, if you can't and don't want to eat an apple a day, at least make an effort to um, have an apple with peanut butter for a snack or make an apple pie or just, you know, put one on your altar or something like that. Good, okay. So that is a little bit about what we're doing with this season. Um, other things that also help to really honor and celebrate this time of the year are some of the fun colors, um, the fall colors. So you could do orange or brown, um, decorate with red, things like that. So pretty much everything in my bouquet right here really honors that. Um, additionally, pumpkins, amazing really good at this time of the year as well. Um, pumpkins are definitely more for, you know, Halloween or what we call Samhain, but they also work at this time of the year too. And then anything that's kind of fun. Um, so uh, for instance, like these little corns um, or anything that's cornucopia or represents the harvest in any kind of a way is also really good. Great. Okay. So now that we've kind of gone over all of the correspondences and the celebrating and the honoring and why we're even here today for this holiday, let's go ahead and do our ritual. So to begin, go ahead and grab your crystals and you've got your white and your black, hopefully. Good, okay. So what we're gonna do is really start to work with the crystals, creating a connection to them. Crystals are powerful, powerful beings that even though um, they don't have like a pulse that you can feel, um, there is something really alive about them. And the way that they work with us is through shifting our cellular makeup um, into their, uh, harmonizing that with their crystalline uh, structure. So it's pretty amazing. So what you're gonna do, again, is just try to pull them in your hands and just start to breathe and connect to these crystals. And as you do that, you might feel like a little bit of a throb in your hand, or maybe your hands get nice and hot or warm. 
Maybe there's a tingle there. Or maybe not, it doesn't matter. Maybe there's just a sensation of something that you can't even quite understand. And this is good, this is chi, this is movement, this is connection. Good. And just try not to judge whatever that connection is. Great, good. So we're gonna create some sacred space now by calling in the four directions. So we use the four directions um, throughout all areas of shamanism, whether it's Celtic or Druidic or Peruvian or South American or wherever, um, this idea of the four directions, the quarters of the world, um, really when you activate and call upon them, helps to create sacred space and a safe container which in which to do your deeper healing work. So just taking your crystals again, and then now you're just gonna rest them gently in your lap. Palms face up, which is a sign of receiving. Good. And again, closing your eyes and taking a breath. We call to the energies of the east, that of the air element, of the great hawk, of the rising sun, for a new dawn, a new day. We welcome you into our circle, into our circle. Please come. We call to the energies of the south, of the fire element, of the great stag of the hunt. We ask for you to bring your passion and your light into our circle. Please come. We call to the energies of the west, that of the water element, of the setting sun, of the salmon of knowledge. Please bring your depth. Please bring your emotional connection and sensitivity into our circle. Please come. We call to the direction of the north, that of the earth element, of the great mother bear, that of the ancestors and the other world, for your love, your guidance, and your protection, your strength into our circle. Please come. And just feel yourself protected on all sides, to the north, the south, the east, and the west in front of you, behind you, to your right, to your left, above you, and below you, in a very, very safe space, shielded, guided, guarded, and protected, so that you can go more inward, to be more vulnerable, and to know and learn more about yourself. Good. So just really start to feel the energies of your black crystal or your darker colored item. And know that this represents your yin side, your feminine. With your eyes closed, continuing to just work with that energy. To feel the weight, the groundedness. This very soft, nurturing, loving energy that gently pulls you more inward, that helps you connect to the earth energies below you, bringing in more stability, security, safety. And just take a deep breath into that. And now focusing on your white crystal or your lighter colored item. And knowing that this represents your yang side, your masculine, the warrior and the doer inside of you, the hot side, the active side, the part of you that reaches out and stretches, that takes leaps of faith, that gets things done, the part of you that is so strong, so courageous. Good. 
Nice. And now try to imagine and feel into what side is heavier and what side is lighter. Your yin or your yang. Your black or your white. Day or night. Good. And using your mind's eye, just imagine a celestial scale coming in to help support you as you create balance between these two polarities, dualities of yin and yang. And just feel maybe as one hand becomes lighter and the other heavier. Or if you can find or feel as they start and begin to equalize in weight, regardless of their physical mass. So that there's an evenness, a quality of harmonization between these dualities, between these different parts and pieces, aspects of yourself. Good. Now that you're balanced, you're going to take your two crystals with your eyes still closed and put them together creating a synergistic energy between your yin and your yang. Good. And just feel that energy coming together in a beautiful dance, like two halves of a whole coming together. Healthy, whole, complete. Good. And taking these two crystals together and placing them on your chest, infusing your heart chakra, your heart space, and your true authentic self with this essence of balance, peace, and harmony. And let yourself be infused with this energy. And to seal it in, I'll have you repeat this very sweet little mantra after me. Black and white, dark and light, balance, find me. The summer is done, winter now comes. Bring balance to my work, life, and fun. And just pause for a moment and take in that energy. Good. And just being really honest with yourself now that you're in this lovely, open, spiritual, intuitive, tuned in, tapped in, turned on space. And asking your higher self, is there still an area in my life in which I can benefit from creating more balance. And just pausing and noticing, witnessing and observing without judgment, just love. And knowing that whatever information comes to you is totally correct and beautiful and right for you in this moment. And so just thanking your higher self for this gift of balance today. Good. And another deep breath in. And out. And now taking your crystals away from your heart and then placing them back down on whatever surface you began here with today. And closing with another sweet little mantra, repeating after me. As the days grow short and the cold arrives, I find balance and joy 
within all areas of my life. And deep breath into that. Good. And when you're ready, opening your eyes again. And just taking notice of how you feel. Thank you so much for taking time out of your life to honor and celebrate this most beautiful time of the year with me tonight. Today is so magical with the equal day and the equal night. And so if you can just really, really take time for yourself to just feel that, honor that, acknowledge that, and utilize that as a sense of completion for what was and an opening and an excitement and a hope for what is to come for you this winter. To close our circle, we release the four directions. We have so much gratitude, honor, and thanks for all of those guides, teachers, angels, and ancestors that showed for us tonight. I pray and hope that all of you find balance, peace, harmony, love, and bliss during this time. Many blessings to you. And so it is. Thank you. <laughs>